Hello everyone, this is Rayspace and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim where during a recent Twitch live stream I decided to fly the B1B by quick flight across the country from San Francisco to New York and there's the entire flight but sped up by a factor of four. That's why it looks way wobblier right there than it ought to. And I decided to show the whole thing but compressed by a factor of four because I'm flying at low altitude following Interstate 80. So for Practically all of the flight, I am trying to stay below 1,000 feet. There are some cases where I go up to 2,000, especially when there are clouds and visibility is bad, this is just for safety's sake. I had the radar altitude displayed on my stream deck, so the game was outputting it uh, for my reference. And so I was using that to uh, keep myself safe. And there is San Francisco, downtown San Francisco, and the Bay Bridge. I'm not necessarily going to be talking through the whole thing. The whole flight was 4 hours and 20 minutes, and so that's why with the video compressed by a factor of 4, uh, this video is a little over an hour long. There is a gap, and that's in Iowa, and that's because I was live streaming this on Twitch and the stream died, and it turned out I needed to restart my streaming software, which is OBS, but I was also using that to record it. And so because I needed to restart it, there's a gap. I was still flying at that time, of course. Uh, all the flying is being done manually, there's no autopilot at all for 4 hours and 20 minutes. It was a rough thing like that, went a little bit high there. Uh, but yeah, a fun flight though, and challenging following Interstate 80 because of all the twists and turns. Some places not so many twists and turns like Nevada, but uh, yeah, here plenty of twists and turns. And I was going at full tilt, about 600 knots down here, all the way. Presenting a video like this is sort of an experiment on my part. I'm not too sure if people will like it, uh, but because it was such an interesting and unique sort of trip, I decided that it might be worthwhile. The B1 is the one plane I know of that can fly at this speed, at this altitude, across the country without refueling, and it did manage to do that. I had some fuel left over because ultimately I turned off the afterburners Oh, as we get lighter, it's easier to sustain 600 knots without the afterburner. And this is very close to Mach 1. Sometimes I'll be breaking Mach 1. I've set the game audio low because it is being compressed by a factor of 4. And the engine sound is fine because the audio is not being pitch shifted. Yeah, when you compress things, uh, compressing by a factor of 4 would actually make it two octaves higher. But the software is counteracting that. so. That, the engine sound is fine, but occasionally there's audio from ATC and also I was playing music at the same time and those would sound very weird if it was much louder. So I'll be putting music on top of it so that we have something pleasant to listen to for the long trip. As I passed by Sacramento and we're heading over to Roseville there. I've always wanted to do an Interstate 80 flight like this, though I imagined it would be with a Cessna and I could never find the time to fly something slow over I-80 for the whole way. Uh, that would be 20 hours or so. So, well, I decided to do with this since I picked up this plane and it was fun to fly, as you can see. And again, it's sped up by a factor of four, so it's not quite this fast. But it still felt quite fast. <laughs> um, uh, it was still uh, very daunting, especially when we hit the clouds here. So now I'm relying practically completely on the Stream Deck's uh, radar alt altitude reading. But uh, I allowed myself to go up to 2,000 feet. Of all places to have missed, you really don't want them over to Sierra Nevada where the land can creep up on you quite suddenly, If even if you can see the current radar altitude, well, that can change very rapidly. But I managed to stay safe somehow. Well, of course, uh, following I-80, one benefit to that is that it's generally lying low, as long as you stay really close to it, uh, you know, it's not got to suddenly climb up a peak. But yeah, it was still still difficult sometimes. This does not turn very well. The plane is uh, not that agile. It's not a fighter jet. So being a heavy bomber, I did my best to try and follow the freeway, but occasionally I will deviate from it. 
And sometimes I deviate from it in order to do some sightseeing. Uh, in the case of Chicago and Cleveland especially, I do. Alright, so here we are crossing the border between California and Nevada. And we are headed to Reno. Uh, to make a really big right turn here. Reno is a photogrammetry city, I believe. But I didn't get quite close to it. Sorry, Reno. That's as much as you get. I thought about not speeding up the bits near cities, but I decided that that would break the flow of things. So I didn't do that. Everything is at the same acceleration. I did slow down the plane around Chicago, and that was just the sheer amount of lag because of the, the immensity of the Chicago scenery necessitated that. Nevada has one of the longer stretches of Interstate 80. Nebraska has the longest as far as I know. This did come up as a discussion during a Twitch livestream. Fernley over there, we took a look at Fernley very quickly. There was also talk during the live stream about the fact that uh, the highway names sometimes get shared. Like we have this Alt 95 along with 80. I was I was more surprised by the fact that there's an Alt 95 instead of just coming up with a new name. There was a 95 over there and an Alt 95. They couldn't have come up with a new name for that highway. You have to have an alternate 95. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah. That, that surprised me a bit. But yes, 95 gets shared with Interstate 80. If people like this sort of format, I would be glad to do more of this kind of flight in various locations. Crossing Canada, for instance, was mentioned during the live stream uh, crossing Europe uh, from London to Istanbul. Uh, though uh, maybe with so slower planes, but still compressed. Or maybe with fast planes, I don't know which would be best. 4x compression is what my editing software does naturally. So if I need it, that's the max it does naturally. So if I wanted to compress it any further, it'd take two stages. I'd have to compress it and then compress it again. I am a little bit worried that it's a bit disorienting or, uh, you know, especially with the camera jerks or stuff like that. So I don't know how it is for viewers. Of course, I sort of flew the mission, so I'm much more familiar with the video in question. And so it doesn't bother me as much. Incidentally, right away, I knew I had enough fuel. The Afterburners were consuming at a rate where I would have had four hours worth of fuel, so I was pretty confident that I'd be getting across the country without any need to refuel it. And the main reason I ultimately turned off the afterburners was I wasn't getting much extra speed from them, especially as we got lighter, because the transonic region, as you get through Mach 1, is very sticky. It has a lot of drag associated with it. Got a little rainbow back there, but uh, because it's so sticky, it's tough to really accelerate through that. And that's why the top speed of the B1B is what it is. It's not that much more than Mach 1. It's because of all the transonic drag, uh, the wing sweep aside. It, it tries its best, uh, shape-wise, but you just can't do too much more than Mach 1. And so pouring on the afterburner didn't really help much. And so as long as I could stay above 600 knots, I was quite satisfied. And you can see the ground speed in the bottom left corner in the Sky for Sim dialog. I don't have too much more to say, so I'm just gonna let the music play and for you to enjoy the view. I'll have a few thoughts as we get to certain places, but I thought about making the entire video without me talking at all and just having music in the background and that would be another way to do it. Tell me which way you prefer if uh, you would see, like to see more of these kinds of videos.
around here the noise from the engines gets choppy and that's because we're breaking the speed of sound and so it, uh, but we're right at it we're right at Mach 1 and so it gets a little bit choppy earlier uh, with full afterburner we weren't really breaking Mach 1 but now because we're lighter we are breaking Mach 1 as we approach the border between Nevada and Utah that's wind over there so here that's Wendover and we are in Utah so Utah Salt Flats here we are Even without the video sped up by a factor of four, the flyover of Salt Lake City was very, very fast. Uh, I think one of my viewers commented that uh, it was sort of here and gone. So, but it's especially the case since this is sped up. There it is. There it goes. And into the Rocky Mountains we go. I did a quick backward view to sort of wave goodbye to it there. Unfortunately, we don't fly over Denver. Interstate 80 goes into Wyoming, not Colorado. You can see past Salt Lake City, it takes a northerly turn. And so we're going to do a big left turn here. And that will bring it up to Wyoming. And through Cheyenne. All right, crossing into Wyoming here.
We were passing by Laramie. And beyond Laramie, I felt that the landscape was looking very Oregon Trail. Laramie reminds me of our Oregon Trail all the time, but... Possibly many viewers will not have played the game Oregon Trail, but many of us of my age uh, definitely played it when we were kids. And this area right here definitely was especially what reminded me of Oregon Trail. It just seemed like people would be crossing it in that game. And viewer Dialogue Root remarked that my copa died of dysentery, which was a thing in Oregon Trail that everybody died of dysentery. But uh, I remarked that since we're going the other way, actually my co-pilot got cured of dysentery in this direction. So there you have it. Here we are approaching Cheyenne, the capital of Wyoming. And so that is the city up ahead right there. So yeah, there we go, Cheyenne, Wyoming. And you might occasionally hear some of the original music in the background uh, from the stream. And hopefully that's not interfering too much with the music I've layered, layered on top. I've tried to keep that soft, but I didn't want to get rid of the engine sounds entirely. That sound is actually the sonic boom being compressed by a factor of four. That, unfortunately, is quite distorted. As we cross into Nebraska here. So this is the longest stretch. For any state, I mean. Uh, the black uh, box at the top of the screen is the music credit. Since I'm overwriting the music and using different music, I didn't want to give the incorrect credit that was what was used during the stream, but that's being layered over. I'll put the correct music credits in the video description.
Unfortunately, the weather was not good as I passed by Lincoln. And I was using real world weather, of course. And I had to also figure out which of the many roads I was supposed to be following and make sure I stuck to Interstate 80. And it did go through Omaha. So really just over Lincoln, it was cloudy. And over to the left is Omaha. I didn't get as close to it as I wanted to, but there it is. And we are now in Iowa. Around here I decided to cut out the afterburners because I didn't need them so much.
Passing by Des Moines, Iowa now. Sighing around here, the game tended to get choppy. And around Chicago especially. Uh, Des Moines, I think, is a photogrammetry city, so... Yeah. The further you go, the choppier it gets. It starts begging for a restart. Oh, that's a serious pause right there. Yeah, I, I remember that. But that, I think, was also associated with my internet potentially dropping off uh, and causing the problem with Twitch because we'll have the gap here where I lose connection and have to restart OBS. So yeah, this is where that gap occurred. Yep. And it took me a while to figure out what exactly was the problem, unfortunately. But so we skipped a bit of Iowa there. Sorry, Iowa. We are now approaching Iowa City and Cedar Rapids off to the left over there. But on the bright side, it was easier to troubleshoot the problem given that Iowa is not so bumpy. <laughs> if I had... If I had some mountains in the way, it might have been a little bit harder to handle the plane and figure out what was going wrong at the same time. Bit high here. Here at Davenport, Iowa, we are at the border between Iowa and Illinois, and we are about to cross the Mississippi River. And there it is. So, now in Illinois. Interstate 80 does one of those interesting things as it crosses the Mississippi. It's been east-west and then suddenly it turns directly south to cross the Mississippi and then it gets absorbed by another in another highway it's uh, 280 so if you keep going on highway 80 down keep going south from its southerly turn it turns into 74 and you actually have to take a intersection in order to you have to do a left turn in order to get back on to Highway 80, which uh, on the other side of the intersection is called 280. Thankfully, the Sky for Sim map was of great help and generally at the right zoom had the proper labeling so I could tell. Otherwise, it would have been difficult. Not all maps are quite as clear, that's for sure. Well, here you can see that the scenery is having trouble keeping up now. 
and like I said, uh, starting in Iowa it got a little bit laggier. Of course, since I'm speeding up the video by factor 4, you won't notice that too much, but it was a little bit more troublesome, and the fact that the scenery occasionally had trouble keeping up was an issue, especially in certain locations. And of course, the big location, except for New York City itself, is Chicago. And we are getting closer and closer to Chicago here in Illinois. I willfully decided to depart from Interstate 80 in order to see downtown Chicago because Chicago is actually further north than 80, you know, the path of 80. So I have to go north and slow down. Not slowing down yet, but we will need to. There we go. Get the air brakes out and everything, the swing wing swings forward. I really like swing wings and of course I think the B1 is very very beautiful. That is the tightest turn I could make at this speed. It was not getting any tighter than that. Alright, and I gotta follow there from one viewer. Not too many follows during this. And then I reacquired Highway 80. And we are now in Indiana. It was getting wobblier and wobblier. I think maybe the lesser fuel load did that. As we drain fuel, it tends to get wobbly. Or it could be the fact that I've been flying for three hours.
and crossing from Indiana to Ohio. Interstate 80 really hugs the border between Indiana and Michigan and Ohio and Michigan. Around here I decided to deviate again in order to take a look at Cleveland. But I thought one dot on the map was Cleveland. It turns out that that was not Cleveland. That dot was not in fact Cleveland. It was the next dot over. So I was looking for Cleveland there. Wondering where the heck is Cleveland. But that was because I was looking at the wrong dot. It's like, oh, there it is. Saw the buildings. But yeah, Interstate 80 is quite a bit south of Cleveland, but it would be a shame not to fly over Cleveland when we were this close. And I did slow down again. So, Cleveland, hello. Direct flyover.
right here I went the wrong way. I thought I was heading south. I thought Interstate 80 was heading south. It, it wasn't. Well, it, it heads south for a little bit, up to like here, but then actually it goes straight east. It's not continuing this way. So this is the wrong highway. Uh, I am puzzled by that, and I only realized when I got to that zoom on the map that, oops, this is the wrong one, and so I had to turn left and reacquire Interstate 80. So, somewhat of deviation, left out some townships in that gap, but yeah. Here we are crossing into Pennsylvania from Ohio, and getting back to Highway 80, so... Close to the border between Pennsylvania and Ohio, I missed some places. But there we go, Highway 80 once again. Pennsylvania felt quite big, but part of that was because I was already very tired. Though the interstate does go through the long way of Pennsylvania, the east-west way is a long way. As we pass by a very convenient little airport there. But after Pennsylvania, there's only a little bit of New Jersey and then New York City.
crossing into New Jersey from Pennsylvania was interesting. I didn't realize there was this sort of ridge right here and an interesting little pass that Interstate 80 goes through, that pass right there. I normally think of the river between Pennsylvania and New Jersey, the Delaware River, I think, unless I'm completely mistaken. Uh, but didn't realize there was that sort of formation there, that ridge. So we are in New Jersey. And then as we approached New York, there was a brief glitch there, a big pyramid in the location of New York. And I joked it was the Illuminati, uh, others joked it was the aliens. Take your pick. It could be alien Illuminati, I don't know. But it fixed itself rather quickly. And now I'll deviate. I think I already deviated from Interstate 80. And we're going to take a look at Manhattan as best I can. Again, this doesn't turn all that well. With the plane at lower thrust and quieter, uh, some of the music that was part of the original stream might be audible. Alright, so their financial district and on up. Didn't quite fly over exactly because, again, turn radius. It's the best I could do. And, well, there's Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty. Didn't get super close to that. Verrazano Narrows Bridge, and then lining up for a landing at JFK. Because I had turned off the afterburners halfway, I was left with about an hour's worth of fuel at the non-afterburner fuel flow rate. So I could have gone for another hour if I had wanted to, so about a 3,000 nautical mile range at that altitude, that, that close to the ground. Which is a lot. Which is a lot when you're going 600 knots. It was very wobbly at this point. And it also started complaining about things. I wasn't entirely sure what it wanted to complain about. That, that was a sound. It wasn't trying to tell me what the heck it was complaining about. But yeah, uh, well, the 4X compression does sort of accentuate the wobbliness, but it was sort of wobbly. It's possible, like, with a stricter fly-by-wire, it would have been less wobbly. That sound ended when I lowered the landing gear, but it started complaining about landing gear rather early, so... I don't know why it wanted landing gear so soon. It's not like it did that when I was flying over terrain at high speeds before, so... I wasn't complaining about the terrain then. Okay, here we go, the landing. Again, compressed. And then it sort of skates around a bit when it's high speed on the ground. But it's more or less manageable. So here we are. John F. Kennedy International in New York. And that was the flight. And I proceeded to taxi it in just to get a feel for taxiing the thing. I hadn't done so before. And it is a little bit difficult to taxi. It likes to go from slow to fast really quickly. Um, 
it slows down very quickly with the brakes and then it speeds up very quickly. In fact, for part of this, I was taxiing at like 50 knots. That felt fine, but then you have to pump the brakes in order to make turns. So over we go. Not a full tour of JFK, thankfully. I cut some corners. I cut that corner. And then parking. So as I park, and I'll try and shut it down as well, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.